hello and uh, welcome to another video from uh, trainingright.com in uh, this video we will be talking about uh, the installation of uh, QTP 11 um, QTP 11 as you all know um, have been released about uh, a year ago um, I guess uh, somewhere around uh, in the year 2012 and uh, uh, since then uh, a lot of people have been downloading and installing and uh, are working on uh, um, QTP 11 um, so in this video, I take the opportunity to show uh, you all as um, you know how we would be installing it. Now I have uh, been to the HP site and uh, I have uh, registered my email and I have downloaded the software. As you can see over here, this is the HP QTP uh, you know uh, Enterprise 11 uh, version for evaluation purposes. And uh, um, when I extracted that, I extracted it basically, uh, and then. Uh, uh, these are the files which you're going to get. Now, if you need to install it, of course, uh, you would be going into the setup and then installing it. So what I have done is I um, I had downloaded it onto my um, external drive, but then I moved it to my uh, internal drive, and here is where I have copied it. So I'm going to be going and then uh, showing you quickly as how to install this. So. Um, as you can see, clicking, double clicking on uh, setup is going to invoke, uh, and then it is seeking your permission to install this on this computer. So I just say yes, and um, the full screen uh, pops up. And uh, over here, um, it is uh, QTP 11 or 11.5 is uh, also referred to as uh, UFT, right? Uh, Unified Functional Testing Software. So, um, I mean, a lot of people refer to it uh, as QTP, some refer to it as uh, UFT. So, the newer version, 11.5, is basically renamed to HP UFT. So, uh, if I need to go ahead and install that, uh, basically, it's uh, uh, what it is asking you, Unified Functional Testing Setup. So, I go uh, click on that, and uh, basically, the installation uh, starts. Now, it's a pretty uh, straightforward installation. It's going to ask you for some simple questions as uh, it prompts you uh, to select um, you know, things you would be selecting and then uh, basically going through the installation. So while uh, it's uh, uh, trying to install it, um, let me take the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, um, how QTP 11 is going to be uh, different from um, QTP 10. Basically, uh, the idea here is uh, um, okay, so it says that the following prerequisite programs must be installed before you can um, go ahead and then do that. Microsoft Office uh, Access Database Engine, that needs to be installed, and uh, we also need to install the Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and then hit OK, um, and uh, it'll go ahead and then it'll install the Microsoft Access uh, on the machine. The version, the minimum version that is required is uh, version 2007. So that's what it is going to go and then install. And then after that, it will install the Visual Studio tools for Office System 3.0 runtime. Um, so again, the whole process um, should not take anything more than um, you know, a couple of minutes. It all depends on um, how fast your machine is, and uh, based on uh, you know the speed of your machine, uh, it should hardly take any time to go ahead and then install it. And that is exactly what it is going to do. Um, so let's. Uh, um, take this opportunity to talk about uh, you know QTP uh, 11 and its features. Well, uh, the as you would be seeing um, in uh, the upcoming videos, uh, that uh, the biggest uh, change uh, that you would uh, uh, notice uh, with QTP newer version of QTP uh, QTP 11.5 is uh, basically uh, the uh, IDE uh, enhancement. Um, they have uh, done uh, a tremendous job in uh, enhancing the uh, ID. Well, um, as I am talking about uh, it, I will also take the opportunity to you know go ahead and then complete this installation. So if you are paying attention to what I'm doing in here, basically it's nothing but uh, I'm just acknowledging um, going through uh, what it is asking me to do next. So it's basically welcoming me to the installation of 11.5. And then it says that it is going to seek your permission that it is going to install it on your machine. So you would say, yeah, go ahead, do that. Um, now, uh, as far as the licensing is concerned, so it's um, asking you to read. Uh, now, who in the world is going to have time to read those licenses? But uh, I guess I encourage you uh, to go ahead and then read that. So 
I agree to what they are suggesting. Um, and uh, here we go. Uh, name of your company, name of your or name of the user, and name of the uh, organization. So that's uh, uh, default. Here it is a uh, um, little bit um, you know important here that we know what we are doing in here. Here these are basically uh, things uh, that we need to uh, select um, if you want to test. Uh, some of the external um, softwares which are um, say for instance like if you need to do some testing for .NET then you have to go and then add the .NET add-in while uh, you need to do some testing for um, you know PeopleSoft or for that uh, matter for the Power Builder or for SAP solutions then you need to go ahead and then um, you know for Siebel and all that you need to go ahead and then uh, select uh, or add uh, these add-ins to your install. Um, for now, I'm just going to go over to the default settings, uh, but we can always go back and then add it uh, even later on. Once it is installed, uh, I'll show to you again the future videos of where you should be going and then adding these uh, add-ins. So for now, you just go with uh, whatever it is suggesting. Next thing is it's giving you the default path of where it is going to install. And uh, as uh, most of the softwares, they get installed into the program files, and uh, it creates a folder called HP, and then uh, is the UFT, Unified Functional Testing uh, folder, and then basically it goes and then installs it. So it wants you to confirm, and uh, that's what we have done. And again, as you can see, depending on how fast your machine is, it's going to take uh, you know a few minutes to go ahead and then uh, install it. Okay, so while it is um, completing the installation, uh, we were talking about uh, you know certain um, things uh, which are basically improved or enhanced in Qubit 11, and one of the things that is uh, that has tremendously have been um, you know enhances the ID, the integrated development environment. So um, uh, in that, basically, you have. Uh, the IntelliSense has improved uh, significantly, right? So if you know what I'm talking about, the IntelliSense features, if you are um, writing a script in uh, VBScript, once you create uh, or once you use an object and when you do a dot uh, in the drop-down window, it exposes all the uh, properties and methods of that object. Um, so there's a significant improvement in that. And um, basically, um, you would see that uh, um, depending on the context of what we are doing at the time, you would see that uh, there's some, um, you know, big help that is just coming our way. Um, also, as far as the checkpoints are concerned, uh, in the previous uh, versions, um, uh, QTP never allowed us to rename the checkpoints. Um, so, um, in this version, we could go ahead and then uh, rename uh, the checkpoints. So, uh, that feature uh, might come handy. For somebody who is uh, basically going to go and then rename those uh, checkpoints. So, um, another important um, enhancement is uh, in QTP 11, uh, the function definition generator. Uh, you know that can uh, that's getting activated. Uh, that's getting basically called uh, from the menus uh, on the top. Before it was not available there, so that's uh, something uh, that you would be seeing. I mean, you know, uh, it, it it is. Um, I don't know if we really want to call it a major enhancement, but that's what it is. Uh, well, uh, the other things um, is uh, the ability to recognize your objects using XPath um, and uh, CSS. Um, now, QDP eleven. Uh, you know, if if in the previous versions, um, if uh, you were to go and then identify an object, you could do that with your object spy, and then the object spy would expose uh, certain attributes of that object, uh, the, the ID name and uh, you know other HTML ID and uh, HTML name and the text value, HTML inner text, outer text, and stuff like that. Now uh, we have um, the ability to go and do what uh, identify the objects using the XPath. Um, so the purpose uh, is uh, it, it kind of like makes it easier uh, to specify objects based on uh, the DOM hierarchy. So if you know if you have worked with the DOM document object model, then uh, um, you know you know that uh, instead of um, identifying an object using the properties, we can now identify the object using the XPath. So 
say for instance um if you um now i don't have the software to show it to you because it's getting installed right now uh, but uh, in the future videos i'm, I'm going to be talking about um, that regular expressions um evaluator um you know that's another uh, handy tool that has been added um so you could uh, uh, if at all if you need to work with the regular expression um there's there's a tool uh, which will help you to you know create uh, the regular expressions and uh, you can also evaluate them um other things are uh, if you uh, want to execute javascript inside the web pages uh, you could do that uh, um, here uh, there is something called the embed script that uh, we could use uh, um, as, as a method of uh, a browser and uh, we could execute any java uh, script that, that needs to be done um, another enhancement is uh, basically in the report um, area so uh, let's say if you're designing the reports the reports uh, look uh, slightly better uh, there are some more features in it uh, um, the print log also can be controlled now uh, programmatically if you need to uh, clear the print log that can be done if you need to show or hide it that can be done programmatically so that's uh, like another uh, you know feature um now another uh, area that is uh, you know uh, have been modified or have been worked upon is uh, uh, the repository right so now uh, we could be basically as far as the uh, repository is concerned uh, we can be doing things like the repository like uh, um, adding multiple uh, repositories uh, to a test before that was not possible so now you could do that uh, if you um, uh, in the previous uh, uh, versions of it uh, you would hardly go ahead and then record record um, um, a test with a single repository so now you could associate uh, more than a, a one repository um, and uh, that also includes the shared object repository uh, right so we'll be looking into that uh, um, so those are basically some of the areas uh, that has uh, got enhanced. Um, so um, I was waiting for the installation to complete, and as you can see, the installation has been completed. Um, so um, that's uh, basically what uh, um, this video is going to cover as, a, uh, as how you would go and then install it. And now, if you need to run QTP, um, I will be in my next video. I'll be going and then showing you as uh, what. Um, uh, you know, uh, new features and how we would go ahead and then do a new test in uh, QTP. So, as far as um, the software is concerned, here it is the HP Unified Functional Testing. So, that has been installed. So, in the next video, I'm going to be uh, running the HP Unified uh, Functional Testing tool. Oh, well, uh, thank you for, um, you know, thank you for uh, watching this. Uh, and uh, in the next video, I'm going to pretty much start off here and then show you what we can do. Thank you again.